as a person, your relation with Allah, how you address people. Do you know if you look at the repercussion of oppression, it is absolutely unbearable. The hadith says, Al-Zulmu, Zulumatu Yawm al And in another narration, Zulumatun Yawm al The darknesses on the day of judgment will only be a result of people having wronged others. When you are an oppressor or a wrongdoer, you will definitely face the darkness of your action. You will face the darkness of your deeds, whether you like it or not. And in this particular case, Allah is not speaking about those who are non-believers or disbelievers alone, but there are two types of oppression, two types of wrongdoing. The ultimate wrongdoing is known as shirk, that which is unacceptable by Allah. When you, for example, perpetrate a crime against Allah by worshipping deities with Allah or besides Allah, Allah says, you know what? أَنَا أَغْنَى الشُّرَكَاءِ عَنِ الشِّرْكِ مَنْ عَمِلَ عَمَلًا أَشْرَكَ فِيهِ مَعِيَ غَيْرِي تَرَكْتُهُ وَشِرْكَ You want to associate a partner in this deal or act of worship with me. I am the most independent of partners. You know what? I don't need the deal. Give it all to the partner. I don't want it. Imagine when you're a wealthy person, multi-millionaire, and someone tells you, hey, okay, the, I've got $10 here. You know, five is for that guy and five for you. The wealthy guy will say, give all 10 to him. What do I need the 10 for? So when you engage in an act of worship, make sure you understand it's only for Allah. Allah says, if you associated a partner with me in that act of worship, I don't need it. Give all $10 to that guy. Subhanallah. What an explanation. What wording in the hadith Qudsi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us understanding. But the second type of oppression and wrongdoing is amongst each other. When you do wrong, amongst each other. When I do wrong to you, I have to taste the result of that wrong either now or later on, but in my life before I die. And then after I die, why in my life? Why? Why is it that Allah doesn't just leave it for the day of judgment? Because man's nature is such that when someone does wrong to him, he wants to see the effect of it. That's man's nature. He wants to see, wow, this guy is doing so much wrong. He's getting away with murder. He's done so much. But we'd like to see that Allah is doing something about this. Now, it might not happen in my life if I was oppressed, but definitely in the life of the oppressor. The one who did wrong, definitely in his life, he will taste it in one way or another. Now, why am I saying this? This evening in Salatul Isha, intentionally I read from Suratul Furqan because it brings about comfort to the heart. Suratul Furqan is one of the most beautiful surahs in the Quran. You ask the Huffar, they enjoy reading it even if they don't know its meaning. What about those who know the meaning? Al-Furqan was revealed in Mecca at a time when the kuffar of Quraysh were accusing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with so many accusations. They harmed him. They said, you know what? You are a liar. You are a womanizer. You have done this. You have done that. You are after money. You are after power. And they started harming him. They started accusing him. They even murdered some of his companions. They started threatening them. And you know what? There was an issue. What was the issue? As much as the believers in Mecca knew that we are alal haqqi, we are on the straight path. They knew we are on the straight path, but they wanted some form of comfort from Allah. I mean, I could be a strong mu'min, but when I see things wrong happening every single day, how long am I going to be able to tolerate this? How long am I going to be able to stay with it? It might work on my iman. Shaitan may be able to come and try his tricks with me, even though he may not succeed. But it's easy for those to shake who have been shaken for a long, long time. That's why the Quran says, وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ Allah says, أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٍ 
Allah tested the, the, the religious people. Allah tested the prophets. Allah tested the greatest of the great so much that there came a time when they who were prophets of Allah and the pious who were the companions of those prophets, they began to ask, when is the help of Allah going to come? If that is being asked by the prophets and by the pious, who are we? May Allah help us. So Allah says, don't worry. When that happens and you are shaken, we have tested you. If you still haven't lost your faith, our help is near. What is the meaning of near? Allah knows. Near could be today, tomorrow, a year, two years, five years, but the end result is in your favor. Do not doubt that. Do not doubt that. Never ever doubt the justice of Allah. Because it has to come. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Furqan, He tells Rasulullah clearly, look, we will punish these people in the Akhirah. You know how badly? We are going to tell you how badly. So Allah says, when Jahannam sees them, Jahannam will start crackling, crackling. You see, sometimes people try to tease and mock. You know, when you see someone and you know that they are, for example, oppressive, there is a hadith which says a sign of Qiyamah is an yukram rajulu makhafata sharri. A man will be honored, not because he deserves honor, because we fear his backlash. When you see that happening, you know Qiyamah is not far. Today you say, Salaamu Alaikum Ji, how are you brother? Not because you want to greet him, but because you know this man, if you don't, he can do something to you that will unnecessarily harm you. That's a sign of Qiyamah. To honor a man because he deserves honor is nobility. But to honor a man who is not worth looking at is a sign of Qiyamah. Sign of Qiyamah. Why are you honoring him? Why do you listen? Etc. Because the hadith says, it's a sign of Qiyamah. We are fearing maybe if we don't do this, he might harm us. So we are, we have no option. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah knows he was upon the highest level. So Allah says, in the same way they were intimidating Jahannam, the crackle will come and intimidate them. Like tell him, hey, this is where you're coming. This is where you, who is saying this? Jahannam itself is crackling. إِذَا رَأَتْهُمْ مِنْ مَكَانٍ بَعِيدٍ سَمِعُوا لَهَا تَغَيُّضًا وَزَفِيرًا Allah says when they get closer to Jahannam, they will hear the sound of the crackle of Jahannam welcoming them into that fire. And it will become louder as they get closer as though it is saying we are waiting for you for so long. You welcome home. May Allah protect us. Why? Because you used to wrong the people. You used to oppress. You used to harm. I always tell people, your colleagues, your family members, watch your tongue with them. Behave with the people. Understand they are human beings. When they raise their hands to Allah to destroy you, you're a goner. You're a goner. We suffer sometimes hell, sometimes wealth, and we don't know why. I'm reading my salah, I'm giving my zakah because there was a maid that worked for you five years ago. You accused her of something, you made her cry tears. She said, Oh God, destroy this man. You are suffering as a result of the dua that she made because the hadith says, Ittaki da'watal madloom, fa innahu laysa baynaha wa bayna Allahi hijab. There is no barrier between the dua that is made against you by someone that you did wrong against in the eyes of Allah. Between them and Allah, no barrier. When they make a dua, Allah says, we will give it to you. Maybe not now, but you will have a day when you are going to see and you're going to say, Subhanallah, oh Allah, you are just. Subhanallah. That's why when Jahannam starts intimidating, Allah says, you know what will be said to them on that day? On that day, they will say, oh, destruction upon us. Look at this. This is destruction, man. Allah says, not one destruction. Don't say one destruction. You will be destroyed to smithereens. Totally. Allah says, we're going to destroy you once and twice 
and three times and four times. How? How can you burn me ten times? I can only burn once. Allah says, no. كُلَّمَا نَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا لِيَذُوقُ الْعَذَابِ Every time their skins and their flesh is totally burnt, we will just replace it with a new one so that they can taste anew all that burning and punishment once more. In the dunya, someone burns you, a little while later the place becomes numb. Someone hurts you, a little while later you can't feel it anymore. It's gone. You lost your sensation. That's the mercy of Allah. When someone tries to harm you beyond a certain degree physically, you will die because that's the mercy of Allah. Allah doesn't want you to taste pain more than a certain threshold. Beyond the threshold, Allah says, I'll just take you away. Mercy. Subhanallah. You see, someone shot you. Instead of feeling the pain, what happened to you? You died. You went. That was the mercy of Allah. But we don't look at it that way. But Allah says, no, it's our mercy. We don't allow man to taste pain beyond the point. They cannot allow, they cannot do it. Allah won't allow it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you see these people, those who have wronged, those who have oppressed, those who have accused, those who have falsely accused Rasulullah sallallahu those who have done harm, those who have worshipped besides Allah. Allah says, don't worry, in the akhirah we're going to punish them. But there was another issue. The companions of the Prophet sallallahu they were happy to hear what's going to happen in the akhirah. But they wanted to know, what about the dunya, man? What about this world? It's not easy for everybody to say, okay, I forgive, khalas, it's over. You need to have a big heart, subhanallah. And these days with the type of food we have, the cholesterol makes it narrow, subhanallah. Tight chest, they say, tight chest, tight chest, small heart as well. May Allah forgive us, <laughs> subhanallah. So Allah says in the next verses of Surah Al-Furqan, same surah, Allah said, don't worry. Let's prove to you what happened to people before you. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَىٰ وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلْنَا مَعَهُ أَخَاهُ هَارُونَ وَزِيرًا Remember when we sent Moses, Musa alayhi salam, to the Pharaoh and his brother Harun, we sent him as a companion and helper to him to be an assistant. Do you remember the time? Subhanallah, yes we do. What about it? Allah says, فَقُلْنَا We told him. Now this is encouragement to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and it is also comfort to all of us to say Allah is just. Allah doesn't let things go by. Allah won't let things go by. So he says, فَقُلْنَا اذْهَبَا إِلَى الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا We told them we want you to go to the people who are already oppressing the other people. It's not like the Pharaoh wanted to do something against Moses and Harun, Musa alayhi salam and Harun. Before that, he was already doing wrong to his people and to the Banu Israel and to the others. So Allah says, we are sending you to go to him in order to guide him, to remind him that he is not the boss. He is not the king. He cannot have it his way. The king is Allah. The boss is Allah. The creator is Allah. The just is Allah. Not you. You are a mere creature of Allah who's going to close his eyes and you're going to face Allah. He denied it. What got to his head? His power, his authority, his wealth. Everything of that nature got to his head. Really to the degree that he told them, I am your Lord. وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمَلَأُ مَا عَلِمْتُ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرِي Fir'aun tells his people, oh my people, I don't know of a God for you guys to worship besides me. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ What kind must that have been? What type of power must he have had? What type of authority must he have had? You know what Allah says? فَدَمَّضْنَاهُمْ تَدْمِيرًا Because of all of that, we destroyed him into the smallest of pieces. Tadmir means total, utter, sheer, complete destruction. Two words Allah said. Dammarnahum tadmiran. They are connected. It means the type of destruction and the amount of destruction is being described by Allah. And he tells you total, complete. The people didn't want to believe that the Pharaoh has drowned. Allah says, no stress. We will make the sea spit his body. When you see it motionless, lifeless, you're going to say, ah, ah. Some narrations say, was this the guy? 
What's this, the guy? Now, yesterday, this is what he was saying. Look at him today. That's exactly what happened. So Allah says, don't worry. It's coming. But when did it come? Some narrations say it came after 40 years, 4-0. But it came. Whether today, whether tomorrow, whether the next day, but it came. Subhanallah. So Allah says, look, O Muhammad Sallallahu whether whatever happens, they will face their day. And they did. Subhanallah, they did. The victory of Makkah came. When did it come? It came a few years later, but it came. Let's, let's carry on with the verses. We're talking about the Prophet Sallallahu and the comfort received and the retribution against the oppressive one, the one who did wrong. Allah says, وَقَوْمَ نُوحٍ لَمَّا كَذَّبُوا الرُّسُلَ Look at the people of Noah when they belied the messenger. What, we, what did we do to them? أَغْرَقَنَاهُمْ We just drowned them. Drowned them. I was watching a WhatsApp clip somewhere in the world. Only Allah knows where exactly it was. Nine minutes of rain, the city was gone. I don't know if you saw that clip. Within three minutes in that clip, already the buildings were moving. This was very recently, sometime this year. While we are speaking, there are floods across the globe. I promise you, Allah is Qadir, Mutlaq. Allah is the one who can do anything. He tells us, I did it already. Look, Noah, how long did we give them to turn, to seek forgiveness, to say, I'm sorry, to make peace with Allah? How long did we give them? Allah says, we gave them 950 years. After that, we closed the door. We told Nuh alayhi salam, you can remain with your people, but you, we want to give you news. None of them are going to accept your message now. Allah says, after 950 years, we closed the door. The door of guidance was closed by who? By Allah. Did you ever know that? He says it in the Quran. Oh, we want to tell you no more people are going to accept Islam now. Door is closed. Allah says that in the Quran. Subhanallah. Why? Allah says, we just want you to prepare. And then once you're ready, we're going to send the punishment. That's how detailed the Quran goes. So Allah says, what did we do? When they did this, we destroyed them. Now Muhammad and his companions, they were thinking, more so the companions when they heard the verse. They said, no, indeed, Allah is just. Allah says, if you don't, if you don't suffice by that example, we will give you more. And so many other generations, Allah says, all of them we have given the examples of all of them what did they do whatever they did we gave them some time during that time they got more excited there were some who might have turned yes they were saved but allah says they became more and more and more when you tell someone fear allah if they become angry at that the quran in surah al-baqarah describes that they are the devil themselves. When someone reminds you of Allah, brother, read your salah. Hey, who are you? Straight. You know, this guy, he's possessed. By what? By the devil. Allah says, with those hypocrites, when you tell them to fear Allah, when you remind them to do what is right, to stay away from wrong, it drives them deeper into the sin and the crime. Allah says, sufficient is them is for them jahannam there's no other place for them why how can you allow your heart to become so hard you're a believer you believe in allah you're supposed to be softened you can't allow that to happen my brothers my sisters when anyone reminds us of allah and to for us to watch our tongues and to watch our character and not to harm people what is hurting us to be polite to everybody what's hurting us why? Why can you not be polite to your brothers, your sisters, your parents, your uncles, your aunts, your relatives, those who are not related to you, the public, the workers, those whom you are working with or those who are working for you or vice versa, whoever you interact with. What is stopping you from being polite? You pay because you hurt someone's heart. They cried a tear for you. Allah has watched the tear. One day there was a wife who came to Rasulullah complaining. The Prophet told her to wait and to hang on. Allah says, no way. There's no waiting, no hanging on. Allah says, 
Allah. Allah revealed verses to say Allah has already heard this discussion between the two of you. And Allah heard this woman who's complaining to Allah. And here is the solution. And Allah gave the solution. So be careful. We don't want this oppression, this punishment. Allah says, look at those who hurt in the past. They did the major wrong, which was also to disbelieve in Allah. But they also harmed the prophets. Allah says, Kadhabur Rusul. They belied the messengers in so many ways. Allah says, we, we, we drowned them all. Kullan tabarna tatbira. You know the word tatbir, tabar. It means to totally destroy them. Completely. There's no way. And I want to end with one beautiful, beautiful point. When these verses were revealed in Surah Al-Furqan, in the Quran, in Mecca, before even the Medina period, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, their iman became strong. They had yaqeen, oh Allah, today we are struggling. No problem. We know the day of Ad, the day of Thamud, the day of Fir'aun is going to come to these people. It has to come. We know it. Guarantee. Watch and wait and see. So one day the Prophet ﷺ, I think it was Umayyah bin Khalaf, if I'm not mistaken, or Ubay bin Khalaf. So they were enemies, real bad. They used to harm, they used to throw things, they used to cause destruction. Rasulullah says, Allahumma sallit alayhi kalban min kilabik. Oh Allah. Now the Prophet ﷺ doesn't normally and usually do this, but this was too much. If you look at all the Prophets, Nuh alayhi salam, he never made dua against his people, but when it became too much, it got to a point where he said, Oh Allah, finish up these people here. After 900 years of sabr, 950 years, then he made the dua. Lut alayhi salam, what happened? The day they came and broke the wall or tried to break the wall, that's the day he says, Oh Allah, finish these people up. Allah says, Don't worry, the morning is their time. You just carry on, don't even look back. So, it gets to a threshold, a point beyond which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lashes out. So, one day this man was walking out in the desert and he saw a lion coming to him. He had so much conviction in his heart. He told his colleagues, this thing is coming for me. I heard Muhammad say, oh Allah, let one of the dogs attack this man and kill him. And the lion came and destroyed this man alone, no one else. Straight for him, he was taken and he was gone. This is the yaqeen. This is the dua. This is what happens when Allah says, be careful of the dua of the one you have wronged. It will have far reaching effects. Now, my brothers, my sisters, when we see things go wrong in our lives, inshallah, mostly it is a test from Allah. It is a test. If that thing brought us closer to Allah, it was a blessing of Allah. Your problem closer to Allah, it was definitely a test from Allah. But if it took you further away from Allah and frustrated you and angered you and made you lose your sleep to the degree that your mind is being lost and you're becoming angry and you can't sleep and you can't eat and you can't drink, then it's the punishment of Allah. Don't worry what people are telling you. They are just making you feel good. It's the punishment of Allah. Why are you being punished? First thing you ask yourself, if your relationship with Allah is okay, which means your salah is in order, you're not a mushrik, you don't commit shirk, etc. Have you wronged someone? Even if it was a little baby, a little child, you want to scream, yell at them. You see, that small baby could have said, oh Allah, break this man's bones. Now suddenly you don't know why you are struggling, suffering, depressed, stressed. You don't know. Oh Allah, finish them up. Oh Allah, destroy them how you destroyed Firaun. We've heard people say this. And the man looks like a pious guy, subhanallah. But why don't we protect ourselves from these du'as? The Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they never ever cursed. Never. But when it passed a threshold, sometimes it happened. It even happened to the messengers. Beyond the point, no one will tolerate it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good lesson. I pray that not only is this comfort for us, when we are wrong, but I pray that we stop ourselves from doing wrong to others. And I really hope that we can start a campaign in our community to improve our character and conduct with our, with our family members, with our community, with everybody else. Wallahi, we can change the whole world. I promise you we can change the world. If you start a campaign with yourself that I'm going to really be the most polite person possible, your life will change and you watch what Allah does in your life.
May Allah grant us barakah. May Allah never destroy us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not let the punishment overtake us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.